Okay. Yeah, oh, I was like, what the crap? I was like, everything's working. Yeah, I, like, had, a, <laughs> I had a mini heart attack there. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, dude, I'm doing good. How are you? Not too bad. It's a bit sleepy, but I'm good. Uh, you know, I first started playing World of Warships Blitz thanks to Terry, but it was your videos and your live streams that truly made me fall in love with the game. Thank you. Like, it's the, the community that keeps me playing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, every time I watch a live stream, there's a bunch of people talking in voice chat. It's just fun. Oh, yeah, mob chat. I, I want to get back to that. <laughs> that is so much fun just getting everyone on there. It's 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 crazy, hectic. Some people don't like it, but I enjoy it. I it's do. Great. It is. It's fun. Oh yeah. Let's start from the beginning. What initially inspired you to start creating content for Blitz, and how did you find your unique style? So actually, uh, I was it was in the middle of the or like the beginning of the pandemic actually, uh, twenty twenty. And I was basically quite bored. Um, I had found a new job and I was doing really boring work on it. Uh, you know, as a contractor, you just get that stuff. <laughs> and I noticed that I was enjoying this game of Blitz. And I kind of always liked the idea of content creation and creating videos and spouting off my own ideas and seeing if people like them type of idea. Uh, so I started kind of recording content because I noticed that a lot of people were uploading videos for this game. But at the time, I'm not going to lie, the quality of the games were dubious at best. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hit screw it and I started uploading videos. And eventually I hit like, you know, three, four, five times a week of doing that. And that's when I went, hey, I'm actually I actually built it in my schedule. I literally went, worked out, came home, had a drink and streamed and like that. Uh, and so it was always this kind of like after workout enjoyment chilling with people and everything like that it took me it took me almost a year to get anyone really watching uh, actually uh it, it, it takes a while to become a, a streamer and being able to do that stuff but i was just like you know hey i want to see what i can do and then my style i realized that out of everyone who was doing content at that time outside of like yeah boy and stuff i don't know if everyone if anyone remembers him and such uh I was like, you know, there's a lot of cool ideas that these bigger creators are doing. What if I just applied them to Blitz? Yeah. And what really lit my uh, fire under my butt was the Cheshire event. Uh, the Cheshire event was actually my first like rant video. I, I thought it was the worst freaking event possible. I thought <laughs> it was going to be the one of one video that ruins my chance of being a CC. <laughs> And so, uh, but yeah, no, I, I just literally like if you look at my content, if you go look at what Call of Duty is doing, what Fortnite's doing, what all those creators are doing, I kind of just take those ideas and I go, hey, how could I apply them down? How could I do that? And um, no one else was doing it. I think now there's a few creators that are generally doing that. Um, uh, and I'm trying to branch out from just doing that. But overall, it's just sometimes you just take the ideas and run with it and see what happens. And it's kind of been working out since then. Yeah, that's so true. And yeah, everything is unique and new for sure. Like every creator has that one moment where they know they're resonating with their audience. What was your first video you created that really resonated with the community? And how did that shape your content approach? Oh, it has to be the first year maker that I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I, I was so wrong. Oh my God, I was so wrong it, um funny enough actually uh, a pc creator actually uh took my video inserted it into theirs and basically were calling me just stupidly bad and i was just like i'm talking about blitz here i'm not talking about pc you idiot <laughs> it was great but um yeah no my, my my takes were so bad in that first video that the community came in and like they started watching the videos and started teaching me how to play better and then they joined my discord and, and really started educating me because they were like a, you're wrong. B, you have the right stuff to do better, but <laughs> let's let's work on this. Let's get you. Let's get you a better player. And I'm definitively a better player than I was yeah. prior to that. Um, 
I still I was I still will blame uh, blame Pramo uh, for them. Uh, I don't know if anyone's still a part of Pramo anymore and such, but those guys nuked my win rate early on in, in my <laughs> streaming career. So um, I'm barely re- I'm barely recovering it right now, <laughs> but it was fun. Of course, like you can your content definitely stands out because of its originality and you, your videos are known for being different and unique. Like, how do you come up with fresh ideas like tier maker and ranking ship videos? Is it something that you took from other people, like other content creators? Oh yeah, uh, it's you know I started off like many other creators here on this is I started putting up stream clips or just good games with music in the background and everything and. It was after the Cheshire event that I was like, hey, I am, you know, I was at the time I was playing Warzone and stuff like that. And they were doing tier makers. They were doing all this other stuff. And I was like, you know, what if I just took what they're doing and applied it to Blitz? And that's what really started kicking everything off. But I started realizing that there weren't really people doing like top fives. You know, people really weren't really going a lot. Of, a lot of people were doing like uh, you had Terry, obviously doing, you know, kind of, hey, well, this is the ship and all the history and and people do that. But some people just want the top five bull crap. As the, you know, you look at Bob's videos or some of my videos of top fives. There's some of the best content created out there. People are hungry for that stuff. Absolutely. So you just kind of you figure out what people are looking for and everything. And looking back on those type of videos, I was at the time I was maybe two creators that were also showing my face. Um, there weren't many creators actually doing that. Yeah, boy being one of them and uh, outside of content, just putting up games and you know, putting their maybe the robotic voice behind it. There really wasn't much happening when I first started. Now there's a lot of content for Blitz for people to enjoy. And I love that. And, you know, i uh, not going to say it was because of me, but I'd like to say that I was a part of the, the, the growth of this community. You're definitely the inspiration for, you're inspiration for sure. Thank like, you. like Thank I you. never thought I would do something like this, like streaming or podcast or anything. But because of you guys, I want to do something fun. That's awesome. I love it, and I, and I will continue to shout out small creators as you know, bigger creators did for me when I first joined in. I want to make sure that I I help give back to what was given to me. Really, like you know, there was a shout out uh, from multiple creators of videos that I did, and that's what really skyrocketed. Thank um, you so it's, much. It's it's all about that. Yeah, thank you so much. Like. Striking a balance between education and entertainment is a key for content creators. As a content creator, how do you balance making educational content while keeping it entertaining for your audience? So there's memes, obviously, you can always do memes, but uh, I always found this and I, I, I learned this actually from Espresso. Uh, he's a, another creator on for Call of Duty, actually, really great guy. Uh, but he did a whole video on how content creation is you have, you have a, a triangle. You're, you, you have entertainment, informative, or skill in each one. And you need to find the balance between the three of them. You need to find what makes you, you and such. You know, I think uh, when I look at myself, I, I like to be a little bit on that more entertainment in informative side and such. My skill, I can do it. I can, but I'm no Steve. I'm no <laughs> Raffi. I'm no, uh, you know, some of the other creators that are dropping 200K, 100K games with like, you're just like, who are these paid actors? Like, how do you find these? People? Like every every, <laughs> every week I open records channel, I see Steve with new record. I'm like, of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, but you, as a creator, you want to find that balance of what, what makes you you? Are you entertainment? Are you informative? Are you skill based? You know, and you look at, uh, you know, you look at Terry and like that. He's very much that entertaining, informative style of things. He's got, he's got some skill to back it up. But when he, people go to him, he's go, they're going for the, the history. They're going for his thoughts. They're going for all like just him chatting. He's a great guy and such. When you go over to like Bob Lynn, you're going definitely more for that entertainment skill with the, that touch of informative uh, nature. And I, I love that balance that he's, he's broken within that because he's such a good player. And then you look at, you know, people like, once again, Raffi, Steve, they're just dumping that skill in there yeah. and showing people like, hey, this is this is what happens when you put 100 percent into the ship and such. And we need that balance of everything in the community to have that variety of content that we have. Absolutely. Like the community plays a huge role in shaping content creation. How important is the support of Blitz community to you and how was their feedback influenced your content? Massive. It's realistic what keeps me playing this game uh, as you know, the gameplay is fun of Blitz, but after a few thousand games, it can be a little touch boring. <laughs> it can. Uh, <laughs> to me, especially after these two months, actually, you now it's uh, just just past two months of me taking a break for, you know, with the baby girl uh, coming in and me being a father. Uh, I've realized, actually, I have very little care of playing my press account. I want to play my main account only. 
um you know but that's that there, there's other questions that i i think we'll probably talk about the fun things of new ships and issues with the game currently right now but it's just i want to play like my main account i don't really care about that and i realized i was just doing that for the community because you guys want to see what the new ship is and your excitement made me excited and now without that that part i'm kind of i'm 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 almost experiencing kind of the game from the main players right now the, the community's perspective no longer from that cc perspective uh because of course you have everything on the rest account you have you know you can just do whatever the crap you want and now i'm like okay no i'm restricted how do i get that ship how do i deal with it how do i you know work with these new updates uh so it's giving me a, a new fresh of uh feedback for myself uh and then f for feedback as a creative uh person you you have to ignore the mean and you just look for constructive and that's the beauty of what this community is it's it's very constructive it's <laughs> it's been in, i have screwed up so many times and people have been like hey that video yeah it kind of sucked dude but you could have done this instead and i was like that's a really good idea holy crap like it's it, everyone's willing to do this so it's you know i know you're starting you know you're really getting into it and creativeness just know you can't fail and that gives you so much more leeway and takes off a lot of pressure off your back so if you're you know, you and many other creators that right now are starting their uh, journey of becoming a Blitz community, contra you know, con that community contributor, if I can't talk like that, and just, you know, putting up videos on YouTube, just know the community is really like there for you. Yeah. They are willing to be like, hey, here's a better idea or here's this awesome idea I've got. They're very, very few times mean. It's, this is not world chat. <laughs> Basically, you don't have to really, really worry about that. So it's uh, I, I love that a lot of you have just straight up pushed me to be better and i'm i'm betting that will be brought on to you and so many other creators for this game hopefully brother hopefully for sure like blitz has a pretty unique community compared to other games what do you think makes the blitz community special compared to other gaming communities so i've actually been a part of a blitz like community before um if anyone knows the game chrome hounds for xbox 360 there was approximately a thousand players Ooh at its at its peak yep it was super interconnected and blitz is as much as it's small it is also a very talkative very vibrant community and that allows for you know you to literally know a lot of players yeah you can really you join up on discord you can probably know about 60 percent of the heavy hitters on a server probably within a week and with that you will learn a lot from people and the interconnectedness it allows us all to be chill a little bit of course there's some bull crap that happens it's world chat you know that stuff and there's drama but at the same time there's so much that this community offers with how small it is yeah that we can all be in agreement on something this is not call of duty where literally you put up a video or you you look at the forum comments and it's it's a freaking civil war going on there um, <laughs> uh, we are very much sitting together as a unit and then you know back when like uh, i'll use another game back when warframe was small and like that back in 2017 god i've been playing that game for a long time but those communities we were right there with the developer and if if only Wargaming would be with us as a community, I think they would earn a lot of trust and a lot of uh, leeway in that. And our small interconnectedness means that they can really tap into that fairly easily. And the fact that they haven't <laughs> is uh, kind of a sad note to say. Yeah, for sure, but no, for sure. Hopefully they can improve. Hopefully they can improve. Hopefully in long run, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Because we need that. Oh, yeah. Like, as you said, not all feedback is positive. So dealing with uh, criticism can be challenging. Like, how do you deal with criticism or suggestions from the community? And how do you decide which ideas to incorporate to your content? So I, a lot of time I will write down. I'll write it down into uh, criticism. I'll write down into ideas of what to put down. And I was always taught to learn and adapt as a, a young kid, as a, an adult. Um, you know, heck, I, I still remember one time I taught myself a brand new programming language in less than a month and a half. It's just you, 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 you have that idea, you have that scope, you learn from it. And sometimes it's all about putting that criticism within a scope that makes it mean something to you. It's one thing that's why it's why you keep the constructive criticism there and you, you throw out the mean. So, you know, I've gotten ideas for, you know, I actually, I have two ideas. Someone actually came up with me. It was like, Hey, what are some, what are some tech tree ships that are, yeah, that punch above their tier? I want to be able to not worry about being up tiered. 
I want to have a ship that I can learn and grow in. And in doing so, I'm not scared of that, but I'm also, I can feel a little bit strong too at the same time. And I was like looking at that and I was trying to figure out, okay, how do I, how can I make this entertaining? How can I make this my own idea or at least uh, adapt that idea and bring it into mine? So I just put on a, a notes, uh, you know, in my note taking app. And about a month later, I was kind of just reading through the notes and all of a sudden my brain just went, hey, what if I do this? What if I add a little bit of meme ideas into it? What if I add a little bit of informative of how to deal with being up tiered when you are in a ship like this type yeah. of idea? And that way you add that informative in there. So it's, it's, you have to put it in your way that you learn and adapt. And sometimes it's all just taking it from where the comments is and putting it into a notes app or something like that. And just kind of looking through it occasionally. And all of a sudden your brain will just go ding. And all of a sudden you have a new idea. Yeah, definitely. It's not like it's not going to work if you keep avoid like ignoring the criticism you're getting. You just have to go through them and pick the right ones and then go for go ahead. Oh yeah. Like the game has changed oh, yeah. a lot over the years, a lot. What changes have you seen in World of Warships Blades over the years and how do you feel these changes have impacted gameplay? Oh man. Okay, so I'm going to age myself. <laughs> uh, I remember playing just after the beta. Whenever I, you actually can see this in a recent video I did with the the selling the Indomitable yes. and how to sell boat. Um, it goes back to the Molotov. So actually, your your oldest ship, it goes back to it. So that was my first premium I ever bought. <laughs> and back then, the Molotov was was a legitimate nightmare ship. It was it was insane. Uh, nowadays, not so much. Uh, but how things have changed over the years, it's really balanced because the the structure of the game and the gameplay itself has not changed, and that's what really makes Blitz. A game you can play for you know god i'm going on fifteen thousand games and such so it's you can play it in so many different ways but balance is the key and thing that has really really altered is there is a a timeless meta where there's certain ships that are just they've always been good and then there's the new meta and you have that kind of uh as things go they decay and change and and the game updates itself via adding new ships in and adding new lines in. And that's why actually, um, you know, adding a bunch of new, you know, high powerful ships like we've had, you know, you look at like the Atlantico, it came out and basically there was like four or five ships that basically used to be really damn, dang good. It now, it, no, they, they, they aren't crap now. <laughs> like people, so, whenever, people uh, whenever they see Atlantico, the first thing that comes to their mind is we're going to lose this battle. Mm-hmm. I'm and like, that changes it. That yeah. that really that really changes it. it you know, I, I always look at it as while the Atlanticos right now are, you know, I'd say they're they're a lot better than what they were, but thank thank God. Uh you look at right now, I look I look at more CVs. Is my CV launching fighters? Is my CV launching planes? Are they managing stuff? Uh and that's gonna tell me more than, you know, one to two Atlanticos on the enemy team. Uh if I'm gonna lose or not, at least in my opinion. But that changes over the years and it's been needing an update. Just a, just a tad, just, just, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, come on, game balance is always a hot topic, especially with new ships and everything. Like, as you said, you have your perspective of game balance, but what, like, particularly with the introduction of new ships and super ships, do you think Wargaming has found the right balance, actually? I'm going to probably take a surprising take from a few people. I think they have found a good place of it. I'm intrigued to see how a few ships come in. And, you know, I, I was actually, I, I'm, I, I can look at the super tester stuff and I saw exactly how things worked in the event. And I can say, I think they struck in a unique way. I don't love it, but I'm not hating it either. <laughs> and I think a lot of people are going to be like that. They're going to be like, hey, I kind of like that, kind of don't. Um, I'm more intrigued to see how Wasp is. And like that, how, how a new CV line is. Uh, luckily for us, the last one came in and was kind of just a puddle. It just kind of came in and was whatever, whatever. And like that, but the Wasp being what it is and being a USS ship, um, I, I'm kind of concerned. And before anyone goes, am I breaking India? I actually haven't even looked at it on my press account. <laughs> <laughs> um, once again, haven't logged into it. Um, I just know it's coming just like a lot of you. Uh, and I, you know, I, I pride myself whenever I'm streaming to be like, oh, I'm trying this out for the first time with you guys. So I, it's a first impressions I like that. Uh, I do say that with the balance of black ships versus sister ships, they're getting a little bit better. They're getting a little more creative on stuff. Um, I can't really say too many other things because there's a bunch of sister ships that came out actually during this update yeah. um, that 
haven't been revealed yet and are in NDA. But uh, yeah, I actually, I actually think we're I mean, like realistically, the worst thing about the balance uh, right now in the game is that there is just some old ships. Like there is some painfully old ships. <laughs> and because of that, the like some grinds are just horrendous. Yep. Like I wanted to get Hind- I wanted to get Hindenburg, but I cannot make myself play right. Rune and then what's the t- what's the T seven? York is all right, but I cannot oh, yeah, make myself York, yeah. Rune. I'm like, come on, it's just too much effort to get Hindi. <laughs> uh, as someone who recently just purchased Hindi back and uh, is playing it, I can tell you that I would much rather be playing my San Martin. Oh yeah, every day, twice on Sunday. Uh, rather be playing so many other ships. Um, I will say if you're like, hey, I kind of want the Venezia. Yeah, I definitely get the Hindenburg. Um, I'll definitely agree with that one. But well, um, I, played I, I actually, I wanted the Black Hindenburg, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Not happening there. Like, I play 10 or 15 or 20 battles a day, and I play 70% of those battles, battles in San Martin. That's it. I don't blame you on that one. Yeah. I wish a... I played more, my San Martin more. Oh, but I'm right now on this, on this thing as I want to get all of my battle honors it's like the first level of battle honors done on all my tier 10s and yeah. then go for the second level and like that i'm like going in like for prestige <laughs> <laughs> look i'm gonna get it but i'm saving the same routine for last because that one's that's gonna be like sipping a nice scotch and cigar like i did that video i finished yeah. i finished san martin's battle honors and that was so easy oh, i can't wait yeah, like some ships or updates can really shake up things. Are there any recent ships or updates that you think have had a significant impact on the game for better or worse? So on the ships side of, of this question, I think that personally, because of, God, I hate to say this, it would be so kind of dreary on this, because of how poor the new ships have come out in terms of crate percentage and or just any chance to get them entirely from keys or anything like that i don't really think a ship has come out outside of the fdr that has actually affected or had a significant impact on the game no even bazan came out and like maybe 20 people have it i rarely see them heck i rarely even play mine i need to play mine more but it's disgusting to play um updates wise i think that 7.4 will go down as one of the only good updates this year unless the next few updates are really good but this was a talk update and you know you're gonna have those updates where it's like full of everything and then you're gonna have the next few updates that are, eh, they, they got some stuff they gotta build <laughs> up another update like that but i will say that 7.3 will probably go down as one of the worst updates for this game if, probably for the last two to three years and so such good. and that had a significant impact i'm not i i i am having trouble playing this game at peak time and not having two to three bots in a game yep and i think that is all because of 7.3 and even if 7.4 is as good as i as we've kind of talked it up to be the events team has been utterly failing this game for a while and in doing so like why are people playing why would why would why would you jump on blitz and that can be really 7.3 7.3 may or may not go down as the death nail that killed Blitz. Like, and I, I talking, hate to say that. I was talking to Soulfire last night, and we was talking about, someone mentioned about Oktoberfest event. I was like, wait, did we have Oktoberfest event? Yeah, we did. Yeah, someone actually had tell, tell me there was an event. <laughs> I don't, like, I honestly yeah. don't remember that we had an event for Oktoberfest. Yeah, they had a few special offers and a crate. Oh, I my. really wouldn't consider that an event. Yep. Actually, I'm not going to lie, that the, now that the second ARP event came out, or, you know, because I'm a CC, the Arpeggio, Blue Steel, RS, Nova event. And like that, I look at that and I'm like, it's a login reward. Yep. I have, like, I have other games that I have weekly stuff to do that I have more important stuff to do on that one. So I'm more playing that than I am playing Blitz with this art. Like, it's just, oh, the RS, Nova stuff. This is just getting worse and worse and worse. And again, the shipyard rotation last night. Oh my God, I couldn't sleep for two hours. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'm I'm just I, maybe I'm disconnected on this one. Maybe I am also running on four hours of sleep from last night because my little girl wouldn't go to sleep. Uh, what's the problem with the shipyard? <laughs> Bro, what is in the problem? Everyone was waiting. Oh my god, it's going to be shipyard rotation. It's going to be great. And then they released Indom Indomitable. Okay, yeah, I agree. I get that one. And it was so and cheap. Was expensive. It was so cheap. It was like ten uh, steel and ten titanium. 
Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. I there was that. there was IG for like it's like tier nine rig up basically. It's like ten ten titanium and fifteen steel. Yeah. They released camos okay. for Dalian, Atlantico, and Marlboro. And then Black Francis. I didn't have two of those. Black Francisco, and then there's a tier six pan uh, pan Asian DD. Yeah, the Jura. That that one's overly expensive. It's like five steel, thirty copper. If it was twenty five copper, it still would be a little expensive. And then but... work workshop. That's it. That's all we got. Rest in peace, Rotterdam port. Never coming to this game. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's why community was furious last night. Okay. I'm telling you, hundreds of people I, bought I can see Indomitable. That. Yeah, as a person who doesn't play tier eight professionally, <laughs> um, I I see why I don't care anymore on that one. Like, <laughs> I hate tier eight. I hate tier eight. Like everyone, everyone likes to talk up tier ten meta and about how it's so sweaty it is. No, tier eight meta is tier ten eight. times sweatier. Tier eight because tier people eight. at tier eight they play mostly CV anchor. Whenever they play Sanjong, Sanjong or Indomitable, they play CV anchor. So there's always tier nine ships in tier eight. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Goes back to that whole ships punching above their weight uh, idea. That's what it gave me. I was like, oh, that's uh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Oh man, like no game is without its issues. Like, have you noticed any recurring bugs or issues in the game that you think should be prioritized? How do these affect the player experience? Let's go now. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Where, where, where we begin? Where? Where to start? So uh, the bugs issue, I think, you know, there's always bugs. I think that realistically, the, you know, the amount of skills that are broken in this game, uh, you know, I, I still exp I randomly occasionally run into the smoke that lasts like five minutes. Um, I don't know where that bug has come from, but it came, I think it came from like 6.4 or something like that. It was ridiculously, and it still haven't fixed it. Um, you still have the occasional lag torps. You still have... Uh, bots bouncing around i know it's an issue well, that is an issue actually bots are bouncing around and they really need to stop it's like seriously stop doing the you know the hokey pokey it is uh the bots are giving me freaking nausea from how much they turn um communication i think that that is a problem that wargaming has right now is they're not communicating with their players much and because of that, that that affects it because of how small our community is. Once again, it goes back to that is this affects the player base because when one or two people or even a, a small clan even starts feeling something and start, starts, you know, boxing, the, you know, kind of talking about it, we're such this small isolation chamber. Like the moment that even a small clan runs into something immediately, it's all the way up to the top clans or even the top clans know and all the small clans have it like it's, it's we're so interconnected. So these problems just everyone knows about them. And yet, somehow, more even no reason acknowledges them. Like everyone I spoke so to so far, everyone I spoke to so far mentioned the lack of communication hurts more than the bugs and issues. Oh yeah, like right now, I suppose there's a torpedo bug issue right now. Um, something with torpedoes doing citadels. Oh my god! Funny. Yes, <laughs> like play ten battles and you're gonna get the armor crusher medal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's insane. Like, if you had the chance of chance to make one big change in the game, what would it be like? If you could suggest one big improvement, what would it be and why? Okay, uh, first two. <laughs> I'm just gonna say the first two are jokes. Uh, bundles need to return at a regular basis, uh, and also better ways for ships to come out. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but okay, let, let's go with reality. Uh, if I could change, if I could do one thing, I think that personally the commander skills i i like the commander talents concept but i have a whole video that's riffing on them right now because there is in fact only seven good skills and there's maybe five situational skills in them and the level of effort that is required to do them and get them and then let alone even activate them in battle i think is astronomic uh, especially when you consider the grind and having a massively older system get a revamp would actually might maybe get older players back is it's be like uh, trying to get like the academy like revamp the economy equipment something like that all those needed revisits because they're just so old the game is getting old and commander talents they were a god what's that stupid tape commercial i like that where he slams against the water and like that <laughs> flex tape or something like yeah, that like yeah. it's like it felt like flex tape being put on but then they forgot that they increased the size of the the water by 2.5x it's just 
there's there's a lot of big improvements. I think Commander Rework would be something where it's like a cool having to go back through all of your ships and rechange of your commanders would be painful. But if if you got the ultimate customization out of that, oh, as a as a person who loves to min max, yes, please. Yes. Yes, please. Like the new commander update was really good at like to some extent because I upgraded commando to level one to level twelve. It costed me one point six million. But from level 13 to level 15, it costed me mm-hmm. 1.4 million. I'm like, damn, that's expensive. Yeah, the and then let alone the XP doesn't work the way that they said in the update. Uh, the XP was supposed to go is that it caps at 12, and then you're allowed to earn free commander XP, and that way you could work up any commander up to you know 13, 14, 15, which would actually have been a really smart system, basically being like, hey, yeah, you can play anything, and then any commander can get that XP. That would have been actually, people would have been like, hey, it's, it's complex, but it would give you the ability to play whatever you want and then occasionally be like, hey, cool, I'm going to get last stand on St. Vincent because I want to be immortal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that type of thing. Um, there's a lot of stuff that 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 commander rework. Uh, I will try to get a video out on that soon. It's I was waiting for information and the information was uh, incredibly sad to get. And once I got that, I was just like, OK, well, I got to make a video on it because this is it's it's not worth it. No, like players' trust is a key element in any game success. What do you believe <laughs> wargaming can do to strengthen their relationship with the community and gain players' trust? Communication, 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 uh, communication. I think I think that's basically at seven point three. Uh, they should have been putting up weekly posts about bug fixes, and then eventually the whole we hit screw it. We have an update coming up. We're rewriting everything. They needed to talk and the fact that boblin and myself and soulfire had to release videos in order to pressure them for a paragraph was sad mm, okay i think i should do a video as well <laughs> just like ranting yeah. for 15 minutes rant 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 <laughs> yeah no it's it's they the thing is the amount of especially when like i, I look at the the bugs of 7.3 and I look at what other games are doing when they have outages, when they have issues. Metal Storm had an outage for six minutes. They gave all of us, I think it was like 50 cents worth of gold, which wow. is nothing, but still it's something. And then a, a few crates that basically give you like uh, random rewards. It would be like getting um, a bunch of blueprints, crates, a little bit of uh, silver and like that. Uh, God, I don't even need to talk about Warframe, what happens when they have an outage. It's literally like giving you like five, ten bucks worth of free shit because they, they went down. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting to see what this login comp- uh, compensation is and either a it's going to be worth it or b the memes are going to be fantastic. Oh <laughs> yeah. Bad it like I mean I already know we're going to get like 1000 2500 XP maybe 50 or 100 gold and then the 6 hour camos. <laughs> oh I'm I'm talking about if it if it's not even like a level a tier 6 for everyone I I think I'd riot. Because it's like I the, the thing that pissed me off the most, and this was something that I uh, it made me feel a little bit more part of the community and less a CC is that here I was feeding my daughter at 4 a.m. And you know what? She's going to pass out on me. I'm going to play a game or two of ships because she's she's passed out on me. I just need to not move to make sure that she can fall asleep. Right. I would like to play a game of blitz. Click open login bug. <laughs> Now, either a I'm going to spend 20 minutes trying to fix this crap or I'm just going to go play play another game. So I, in fact, bought an entire Steam deck so I could play Warframe instead. Like, it's like, you, you, do you understand that you could have gotten that money from me, Warg? I mean, if you would have freaking made the game play. Oh, my God. Sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm going off script. No, no, <laughs> if there is a script. I don't even know if there's a script, there but I'm ranting no now. We I'm just ranting. Talk, we just talk shit about ships. That's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shoot the shit. You know, it's it's just, oh, my God. 7.3 infuriated me. For any, for If it wasn't for having a baby i would have probably posted up weekly videos going so anything <laughs> right. anything like oh my god oh my god it's not that hard just just communicate what's going on and tell us your issues we understand if you let us know what's happening we understand yeah like we're talking right. about relationship between player base and the uh, Wargaming, but Wargaming's relationship with content creators is also crucial. Are there any steps you think Wargaming could take to better support content creators like yourself? So without 
without going into specifics, because there's certain things I'm not really sure I can talk about. Yeah. But I will say that they right now are doing the the right amount of minimum effort from them to support us. But I think that their radio silence on doing shout outs and talking about cool things the community is doing and videos that are popping up, like it shouldn't just be other community contributors or even just people who make videos shouting out good content and like that. We have loads of small creators to this community and we never hear about them. You have to go out and find them. You have to hope that the YouTube algorithm gods get your video into someone's hands and like that. It's, you know, I, I look back and like, if it, like if it weren't for yeah, boy, I wouldn't be here. Like I would have been, I would probably be a few thousand behind and like that. It's, it's, it's why is it our job as the community contributors to be shouting people out in order to grow the community? You should be wanting to grow the community more. I mean, you should. And while collaborations are like right now are absolutely key to success on YouTube and growing and doing everything, Wargaming needs to collab more with us to help us too and help smaller creators grow. You know, there might be someone who's only got 300 subs, but give them, you know, give them a shout out and all of a sudden that might give them 500. You know, it's just they have the the audience and yet they're not building the community with it. I'm tot- I totally agree with you. Like promote your content creators on, at the same time, they should also promote and shout out the tournaments and the events that community yep. does. 100%. Slightly, it's like we're doing it for the game, for the love for the game and love for the community, and you're not even doing your minimum job, which is to shout out all these tournaments and the events we're doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can't do much, like, you know, if they are not interested, you know? Like, yeah, it's it's one of those things that there's there's a lot of other... Like, I try not to compare Blitz to other games and learn about what they... You know, because, of course, you, you look at, like, what you know, our terms and conditions are with, with being CCs and you go look at other games and stuff like that. And you realize, man, we like, they do the bare minimum, uh, to help out. There's a lot of their games that it's like, I've, I've suggested for a while that actually, you know, people can type in a creator code and whenever they purchase gold or do any, or spend gold, a certain amount goes to us or something like that. So we can do giveaways or we can use it on our main accounts or stuff like that. Um, I wanted to do that from the beginning, but it's just, it, there's so much that they could do and it's a lot of it does not require that much effort but we're such a small game again like it's just i don't know yeah (laughs) let's talk about the future like looking ahead what are your future plans in both content creation and your journey with the within the game any exciting projects or ideas you can share with us yeah so uh actually as you know coming back from my three-month hiatus which might i'm not gonna lie might become a four-month hiatus I just, you know, trying to get a newborn into a brand new <laughs> routine. Like I right now, I am literally hoping she's asleep right now. Uh-huh. Like that's the thing right now is I'm hoping that she's a, she's staying asleep right now. I'm hoping that I'm being, being not too loud, but I'm really hoping that I can get to, back to streaming. And uh, I have a few video ideas I want to get out, but I think that basically I'm going to go back to just streaming and stream clips because that's really all I have the time for as a new parent. Um, I want to do about three to four more bigger videos. I have a whole meme video I want to create so badly. <laughs> um, if if I if I had to give a, a, a little hint to it, hopefully I'm hoping that I can eventually get done. But it's basically infomercial meets the hatred of, of CVs meets '90s car salesman. It's gonna be great. <laughs> I'm hoping I can nail it right. I'm hoping I have a, I have a script. It might be a little too harsh. I'm just gonna, I gotta tone it back a little bit, but realistically like for me with blitz i like especially i'll give another one i want to do a fifteen thousand game review of the game i'm nearing fifteen thousand games i want to do a a thing and i you know tldr i still think the game's worth playing it's just right now it's got a bit a bit of issues but there's still thousands of hours of content in this game yeah to to mull through for absolutely free that's awesome but you know (laughs) with being a dad (laughs) i found a new love of the game just from the core gameplay again and i've really enjoyed just playing on my main account and with streaming i think i'm going to come back streaming and maybe occasionally play my press account i'll probably try to do two streams a week and the other stream will be another game um in my opinion oh, i don't know if i want to say this um blitz's future doesn't look bright yeah in my opinion I 
I hate to hinge it on certain things, but that Transformer event, if they bung, if they bungo that up, I am going to be so pissed. Bro, I'm telling you, if I'm they, gonna be so livid. I'm telling you, if they fuck up the Transformer event, they're going to lose a lot of players. Because everyone is yeah. waiting for that event. There's so many fans that go up, like, love Transformers. And even I am waiting for it. I'm like, I'm not spending on this game for a few months just so I can spend on Transformer event. But if it's like something you can't, it's like une- unachievable, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, like, the, the future of this game, like, it's, I, you know, I'm being told by other CCs, hey, log into your press account. This, this ship is really fun. And I'm like, yeah, the ship is going to be fun. It's going to come out as a bullshit crate. Or as a sonar sweep. How can I, as a... How, how... I don't like it. So how can I sell it to you? Yep. How do I... Like, how can I live with myself on that one? I know I've... I know I've done it in the past. Like, it just... But now, I think... Because I've kind of had that reset mindset of being... Kind of more just a part of the community... Rather than a community contributor with being... You know, so much time off. I, I just... How I, I don't, I, I really want to maybe see if that pushes Wargaming to change up their mind. I don't, I doubt it will, but, you know, I don't know. Then it goes back to the whole idea. It's like, you know, I had the whole login bug and it made me buy a freaking Steam Deck. It's like, why play Blitz when there's something else that has better limited time events? Events really need to get the player base on. And I don't feel like they're doing that at all. And, Add on new ships are just coming out in bad ways. It's I love the game and I love this community. I do. It's the whole reason why I play this game. Whole reason why I create content for all of you. Whole reason why I try to make sure I shout out and like that. And I, I'm so vulture. Thank you for inviting me on here. It's been an. It's awesome to talk to you. No, it's my pleasure, brother. Like I just want to take a moment to acknowledge how much of a positive impact you have had on Blitz community. Your commu- you're, you're like your content is not only unique and entertaining, but also incredibly helpful for players at all levels. The dedication and passion you bring to your videos really set you apart, man. Like thanks for everything you do for the community, and we all appreciate it. You know. Thank you. I'm uh, I'm trying to. Who's cutting onions? God damn it. <laughs> oh no, thank you. I I I'm glad I can be that for this community i'm glad i can be that for you and i can help out and i want to help out more obviously baby you know family takes precedent and with that right now but i want to come yeah i want to i want to come back and i want to make sure i can do do this not over exhaust myself but i want to help try to see you know if i can do per se a last dying breath of going hey wargaming you got to fix this stuff you got to write the ship right now because once again having kind of gotten back down to the ground floor with a bunch of other people it god like i don't know how some people are, are playing this game sometimes so much it's the future of this gameplay is or this game is a bit they, rough i think they just need to hire new events team oh yeah that's it whoever whoever's running the up, updates team have them train someone yeah <laughs> <laughs> the art, art department see if they can somehow translate whatever the art department's doing into the events department but yeah no i like i'm gonna keep on playing this game because i love the community you guys have been awesome to me you guys have allowed me to learn and grow and create this stupid pandemic just suggestion that i had of what if i just start uploading videos and here i am i never thought i'd be here I, I, I seriously, everyone, you know, some people like to be like, yeah, you did, you kind of had ideas. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> it's a small game. Like, you're not expecting to be this. You're not. And and you all have given me that capability of being your voice for you. And I'm so glad that I have done that job. And I, I feel like I've done it well. Um, hopefully I've done it well. No, you did, <laughs> and I hope that I can, t- can you continue. You did such a great job, brother. You did such a great job. Like I said, I yeah. I wouldn't be doing this if not for people like you. Like you guys are inspiration for all the new content creators. So, and yeah. If there's anything I can do to help, if I've got a little bit of time, let me know. I, I will try to help you. And like that, there's so much to this whole content creation just ecosystem. It can be a lot. <laughs> and but you know, you reach out, Bob, myself, a, a lot of the CCs, Pig Bay, Terry, we've all, you know, DFA got it. I don't want to go through the entire list, but you, you know, you know what I mean? We're all yeah. here. Just we're all approachable. We're all in a small community. We can all help each other out. And 
if you want to be a community con- or you want to be creating content for Blitz, do it. Don't take my doom and gloom. Maybe you're going to be the next me and you're going to be able to write <laughs> the ship with your take and yeah. your philosophy. Maybe I'm just the old philosophy and I'm dying out. That type of thing. That could happen. That happens to games often, actually. It's the, you know, the, the changing of the guards. But um, yeah, I, I really just. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where to go with that. I, yeah. I don't know where I was going with that at all. I will definitely reach out, brother. Thank you so much, man. Like, yes. thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and being part of this podcast. No, thank you for having me. Thank you, and it, great work. Keep it up. You're hitting all the big names. You're doing like just you're coming out strong, dude. That's that's awesome as a community contributor. And collaborations grow you so much. It is. I can't stress that enough. Collaborations are what get you to so many other things on youtube and twitch and everything so you you are nailing it right now you are doing an awesome job thank you so much brother all right i cannot wait for people to listen to this episode in two weeks (laughs) (laughs) definitely thank thank you for having me thank you for having me good luck to every good luck with everything you do brother oh thank you you as well thank you bye Uh, have a good one